Let's dive into the background of the highly engineered magnetic bearing product that delivers the customer simplicity and great value. This is a screen grab from the OptiView control panel on the YZ Chiller that shows what is happening with the magnetic bearings. Let's focus on a few important distinctions. A magnetic bearing system uses multiple sensors to know the position of the rotating assembly, but it is always taking very fast action to reposition it. The magnetic bearing controller is literally changing the output of the magnetic field 20,000 times a second. In the one second pause I just took, a magnetic bearing controller could have given 20,000 commands to the electromagnet to make sure it controls position properly. When it does that, we are controlling positions. As you can see on this image, we're reporting our position to the hundredth of a mil. Let's back up for a moment and talk about what a mil is. First of all, do not mix up mil and millimeter. A mil is not the abbreviation for millimeter in this case. Mil is a measurement that is equal to one one thousandth of an inch or 0.025 millimeters. To put this in perspective, something we can relate to, we're going to say that a mil is less than the width of a human hair. We're sensing position down to a hundredth of a mil and we're adjusting the output of the magnet to hold that position 20,000 times a second. This is the engineering equivalent of talking to a couple satellites and calculating your position on the planet and it is presented to you with the same amount of effort that you needed to do to achieve that goal. Nothing. It is all done for you. One of the questions we often receive is, electromagnets need power. So how does this system work in a power failure? This is pretty straightforward as an uninterruptible power source, or UPS, is often used to get electronic devices to survive power failures. In the case of the YZ Chiller, it is supplied with a battery and a UPS system that seamlessly transitions the power and enables the compressor bearings to levitate all the moving assembly until it goes down to a complete stop. In the absolute worst case of a double failure, meaning the chiller had a power failure at the same time the UPS had a failure, you have an additional backup set of bearings which can catch the spinning assembly and allow it to slow to a stop. What you are seeing on this screen is video playback of actual chiller operation and really what the bearings do when a chiller is running. Let's first look to the right at the legend to help orient you. Anything that is in red is referring to our radial J bearing, which is on the compressor side of the motor. This is helping to make sure your working assembly is centered. The blue or radial K bearing is doing the same thing, but helping from the opposite end of the motor. Your yellow and green lines are the thrust bearing. So this is controlling the lateral position of that entire rotating assembly to make sure you're not drifting too far in one direction or another. On the left, we're looking at the bearing position and you can see this is an orbital view. So that gray circle would be your total clearance, in this case, eight mils. We just talked about how small a mil is. So eight mils on either side is a couple of hairs and we're maintaining tolerance within one mil under this normal chiller operating condition. On the right, we have the forces that are being applied to these bearings over a period of time. We're showing 100 milliseconds. I previously mentioned these bearings are responding and reacting and adjusting the amount of force that they're going to provide to maintain that rotating assembly 20,000 times a second. This is all happening extremely quickly. You can see during normal chiller operation, a fairly regular pattern. You're really just keeping that loop spinning and tight. So there's some regular reactions and patterns we see, but the bearings are able to really keep everything centered within a very tight tolerance. Now, what happens during surge? The bearings are designed to handle any kind of operating condition. We don't want a chiller to operate in surge or stall 
but the bearings are able to live through this kind of event without any issues. You can see on the left that our orbital view is now moving a little bit more to the right. We have a tolerance movement of approximately plus or minus four mils. But remember, that's still only two human hairs, and to the naked eye, you would not be able to see this movement at all. We wouldn't be able to tell that the rotating assembly is moving at all. It would be completely imperceptible. On the right are the forces. They're responding very quickly. The bearings are doing everything they can to stay centered and keep everything levitated and running through this kind of surge event. It's happening a little bit more irregularly. The pattern is a bit different than we saw with a normal operating condition, but the chiller is able to continue to operate and push through a surge event without needing to shut down for any reason. Now, for the final view, here's a comparison. We're just looking at our normal chiller operating condition on the left and that surge condition on the right. So you can see if there are differences. The bearings look a little bit different and how they respond also looks different. When we really blow up that scale, remember, we're looking at mills here, but the magnetic bearings really do not care whether you're in normal operation or in surge. They can continue to operate. They can continue to run. The bearings are at no risk of running into their clearances or hitting any kind of backup bearing or causing the chiller to shut down. Everything is able to continue to run smoothly and the magnetic bearings are continuing to operate reliably through any kind of condition. Magnetic bearings have no contact or lubrication. We have a really simple design from the system perspective. You can see here that the only real component we show on this chart for the magnetic bearings is the magnetic bearing controller. All of the complexity is contained within this controller where there is no wear no maintenance. We have done all of the complex design for you, and we have removed the need for you to do any maintenance on the magnetic bearing system or worry about its ability to continue to run. The YZ Chiller offers a reliable and robust design that can run through any kind of chiller event.